To travel by train along the English south coast is one of the best ways to experience and enjoy the great British countryside, combining popular resorts with beautiful scenery. Where the downs descend to the sea, there are craggy headlands, sweeping bays and miles of magnificent beaches. There's always plenty to see and the railway travels through the heart of it all. Wessex express trains speed along the main line, supplemented by electric, diesel and tube trains. There's also preserved steam at Swanage and on the Isle of Wight. Our journey takes us from Dorset, through Hampshire, and across to the Isle of Wight. This popular area is well connected to the rest of the country, and the trains arriving in Weymouth bring holidaymakers from all over Britain. Weymouth has been a major seaside resort since the 18th century. King George III was a regular visitor and the town soon became extremely fashionable. Today, it's popular with visiting yachts and tall ships, all jostle for space in the old harbour. Towering above the bay, Noth Fort offers panoramic views of the coast and the Portland Peninsula, and they are regular guided tours. From the Thames estuary down to Plymouth, there was um, a number of these forts uh, built. They, uh, this, this particular fort was built from 1860 until it was garrisoned in 1872. The first garrison was 400 men and officers. It wasn't used as a military base as such. Over the years, it had a very different life. The First World War, uh, going back to the 1914-1918 war, we had uh, three bre uh, breech loading, six inch breech loading guns put in on the ramparts around the back here. During the Second World War it was used as an ammunition dump and we had um, ammunition uh, placed in, in the underground passages here and we supplied uh, anti-aircraft guns in uh, Southampton, Plymouth, Coventry, and places like that. Back at the station, we board one of the Wessex Express trains, new electric units built especially for the line between Waterloo, Bournemouth and Weymouth. On the edge of town, the line skirts Redipole Lake Nature Reserve, where cormorants dry their wings after a spot of fishing. The way to Dorchester is blocked by the South Dorset Downs, and at Binkham, a long tunnel cuts through the ridge.
on the other side is Dorchester, once the heart of the ancient kingdom of Wessex. There's a timeless quality to Dorchester, for Dorset's county town has a long and varied history. The keep was built as a regimental gateway and now serves as a military museum for the Devonshire and Dorset regiments. Thomas Hardy's connections with Dorchester are clearly visible, and the town became Casterbridge in his novels and poems. The Dorchester Brewery dates from 1880. Today it's operated by Eldridge Pope, who brews some of the most celebrated real ale in the country. Dorset County Museum is housed in another splendid Victorian building. Exhibits date from Roman times. The Cast Iron Gallery is a handsome showcase for local history collections, and there are displays relating to Thomas Hardy. The world's first fossils were discovered in Dorset. Some of these are featured in the Natural History Collection. The museum also contains exhibits from Maiden Castle, the Iron Age stronghold of the local Eurotrigis tribe. This Celtic tribesman was killed by a Roman ballista arrow while defending the castle in 44 AD. Other objects reflect more peaceful activities. The line turns east and follows the River Froome into Wool. Wool Station serves Bovingdon Camp, Britain's principal armoured training ground. Bovingdon also houses the Tank Museum, where almost 300 armoured vehicles are permanently on display. Throughout the year, there are special events which culminate in Battle Day. Modern armour vies for attention with veterans from the First and Second World Wars. Many of these vehicles have been restored to full working order.
RC entering two British Dingo armoured cars that are reconnoitering forwards. They have a crew of two, and each is armed with a Bren machine gun. They're capable of a speed of 55 miles an hour. Battle over, we continue east, crossing the river Piddle and into Ware. The old station building and the pub next door have survived from the days of steep. The town of Wareham is much older, dating back 2,000 years. The grid-like street pattern could be of Saxon origin, and its earth ramparts, or town walls, date from King Alfred's time. The Church of Lady St. Mary was founded in the 8th century, and on Church Green, a royal wedding has been commemorated with a young tree. The Unitarian Chapel is now the Conservative Club, and the old quay, which was once the hub of the town trade, is now used for leisure only. Corfe Castle is a picturesque village nestling beneath the towering ramparts of a former royal stronghold. Here, in 978, the young King Edward was stabbed to death on the order of his stepmother. The castle is one of the most dramatic ruins in Britain and is now protected by the National Trust. The decaying walls and towers bear powerful testimony to centuries of bloody conflict. village, which is clustered round the base of the castle, boasts England's smallest town hall. Behind one of the narrow streets, the village is reproduced in miniature, complete with the castle in all its former glory. There's also a beautiful garden. Corf, the old Purbeck line, 
has been restored and now connects with the coast at Swanage. The perfect line was closed in 1972, but a dedicated band of volunteers set about recreating the railway from scratch. Swanage station was returned to its original condition and motive power is provided by restored steam locomotives. This M7 tank engine began life on the London and South Western Railway in 1905. There are also preserved diesel locos, but today's train are hauled by 257 Squadron, a Battle of Britain class bullied Pacific, built for the Southern Railway just as it merged into British Rail in 1948. This is an area of outstanding natural beauty, and the Purbeck Hills provide shelter for plenty of wildflowers and the honey buzzards, one of Britain's rarest birds of prey. Here at Harmon's Cross, shortly before the completion of the line to Corf, 257 Squadron runs around a train before returning to Swan. Swanage itself is a popular seaside resort with a sweeping promenade and a safe sandy beach enclosed by rocky headlands. To 
the north is Studland Point and the impressive chalk stacks of old Harry and his wife. To the south is Durleston Country Park. Below Durleston Head Castle, there are some unusual geographical monuments, including a massive Victorian globe. The cliffs are home to nesting seabirds, and out to sea you can often observe dolphins. approach to pool, there's a long causeway across Holes Bay. Once the haunt of smugglers and pirates is now paraded by the Salvation Army. In the aquarium complex at Henning's Wharf, you can find sharks and crocodiles, and one of the largest model railway layouts in the country. regular boat trips out into Pool Harbour, the largest natural harbour in Europe. Brown Sea Island. A little over a mile in diameter, it formed a defensive stronghold. The castle was built by Henry VIII in 1548. Today, Brown Sea is regularly invaded by visitors. It is owned by the National Trust, who maintain part of the island as a nature reserve and bird sanctuary. less shy and often approach visitors in search of food. Brown Sea was the birthplace of the Scout Movement. Here, Lord Baden-Powell held his first Boy Scout camp in 1907. Back at Pool Quay, Morris dancers accompany us back to the station. The line sweeps out past Pool Park Public Gardens, which surrounds a large lake. 
the park contains its own military railway. The train soon arrives in Bournemouth, a busy station covered by a high canopy. Bournemouth is the biggest resort on the south coast. The mild climate has attracted holidaymakers since Victorian times, when two piers were built to cater for the extra visitors. A special land train runs the length of the seafront and access from cliff tops is provided by cliff lifts. After crossing the river Stour, we arrive in Christchurch, a Saxon town which was once the stronghold of Alfred the Great. The town is ideally situated at the joining of the Stour and Avon rivers and was once called Twynham, which means place between the waters. The streets lead down to the town quay, where there are ferry cruises and amusements for the visitors. The castle ruins are all that remains of a keep built in the 12th century. 
It was demolished after the Civil War about 500 years later. The town was always popular with royalty, but the castle was uncomfortable, so a constable's house was built nearby. This building has the unusual claim of Britain's oldest standing chimney. Legend has it that Christ himself helped to build the massive Augustinian Priory, giving the name Christchurch to both Priory and Town. There has been a Christian church on this site from about 640, but the present church was begun in 1094. Uh, from 1150 until 1539, the monks lived in the town, worshipped in the church, and in 1539, the Reformation, King Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries. Uh, another great damage in the church was in about 1400 when the central tower fell down uh, and a lot had to be rebuilt. Christ Church is full of character and the past is never very far below the surface. The Knights of Christ Church have returned and are now a major attraction for visitors. Right, peasants! The Black Knight wishes to see all of you at his jousting tourney at the Two Rivers Meet Arena at 3 p.m. These tournaments will run every day throughout July and August. The parade leads to the big top, where the tournament is about to begin. Departing Christchurch is one of the local names trains, Thomas Hardy. Several other types of train can be seen on the line as it heads out towards the New Forest. Brockenhurst is a small town in the New Forest which grew up around the railway. The New Forest is a popular recreational area 
which was created as an exclusive royal hunting ground back in the 12th century. The wild boar have long since gone, but there are now hundreds of free roaming ponies in their place. Although some of the new forest is woodland, the typical landscape is heathland backed by trees. We've got many species here uh, which are threatened nationally and internationally. We put a lot of energy and work into conserving them, to conserving the habitats which they need to thrive in and to ensure that the richness of the forest continues for the future. Every year the New Forest Show Society hosts a massive celebration of local agriculture, skills and traditions. from the New Forest Owl Sanctuary at Ringwood and uh, we've got over 400 birds open to the public every day with six flying displays for the people to see these magnificent birds flying free. On to Bewley now and a monorail system to carry you back to the foundation of Bewley Abbey in 1204. King John made a gift of land to Cistercian monks who took vows of poverty, chastity and silence. This was his only religious foundation but it became the largest of all the Cistercian churches in England. A replica 1912 London bus takes us to Palace House, rebuilt from the Abbey's great gatehouse. Three veteran cars from Palace House formed the basis of the National Motor Museum. The museum was established in 1952 by Lord Montague as a tribute to his father and aims to collect and conserve vehicles and other materials relating to the history of motoring in Britain. There's also a chance to get behind the wheel of a real vintage car. Many of the museum's vehicles are in full running order and they are regularly paraded for visitors.
From Brockenhurst, the Limington branch heads south over Setley Plain and down towards Limington. Limington, the line crosses the river to its terminus at the pier station and the ferry to Yarmouth and the Isle of Wight. The popular yachting centre of Yarmouth is one of the oldest towns on the island and was home to the island's governor. Twice Yarmouth was attacked and ransacked by the French and as a result Henry VIII provided the town with a castle. Yarmouth Castle was built in 1547 by Richard Worsley the earliest example of Italian fortification in England. It's now in the safe custody of English heritage. There has been a regular ferry service between the mainland and Ryde since 1805. The pier opened 10 years later and since 1864 has carried trains into the town and on to Shanklin. The trains are unique to the island. Converted from London underground tube trains, they run on a 660 volt DC third rail system. The hovercraft is an attraction in itself and provides a direct link between Portsmouth and Ride Esplanade. Starting the Esplanade, the train burrows beneath the town and heads out to Smallbrook, the junction with the Isle of Wight steam rail. The centre of operations is at Haven Street, on a preserved line which was closed by British Rail in 1966. Before passenger trains can get underway, there's some shunting to do, and Royal Engineer number 198 proves to be the ideal engine. Built by Hunslet in 1953, this austerity saddle tank once worked for the Ministry of Defence. Steam locomotives from the Freshwater, Yarmouth and Newport Railway were saved because of the island's isolation. British Rail diesel shunters have also been added to the stock list. Since the line reopened in 1971, sidings, workshops, 
and other facilities have been added to the original station. Passenger trains are made up from antique coaching stock, including some of the world's oldest working carriages. To the west, the line terminates at Wooten, not far from Osborne House and Cowes. Osborne House is a large Italianate villa, once the seaside home of Queen Victoria. Today it's managed by English heritage and is open to the public. Prince Albert was largely responsible for the design, and the Queen loved it. It was here that she died in 1901. The social season is Cow's Week, a blend of yachts and royalty, which has attracted huge crowds for more than a century. Main line, we continue south to Braiding. The old rectory mansion is the oldest house on the island, built in 1228. It is now a wax museum, housing famous and infamous characters spanning 2,000 years of the island's rich heritage. Braiding Roman Villa was discovered in 1879. In its heyday around 300 AD, 
it was the center of a rich and prosperous farming estate. The site dates from the first century and contains one of the most important Roman floors in Britain. Bembridge, the island's last windmill still stands proud. From Bembridge down, there are magnificent views over Sandown Bay. Scenery like this and an abundance of wildlife are part of the attractions of this holiday island. From Brading, trains run along the Yarr Valley, from Sandown and on to the terminus at Shanklin. Franklin's old village is a picturesque cluster of thatch-roofed cottages, shops and hotels. The poets Keats and Henry Longfellow stayed here and the area is referred to in the Doomsday Book. In the clifftop gardens there's a sense of peace and tranquility, while below there are some wonderful clean beaches. Shanklin Chine is a deep and narrow ravine formed over 10,000 years by a stream which has cut its way back to the foot of the downs. The Chine is famous for its ferns, mosses and liverworts, some of which are extremely rare. It was first opened to the public in 1817. During the Second World War, the Chine was used for commander training and for the pipeline which supplied petrol for the Normandy invasion. In Victorian times, visitors were often treated to hot brine baths. The south of the island has seen less development and is perfect for those who want to get away from it all. The downs descend to the sea, and the landscapes are truly beautiful. At the Effort Mill near Shawwell, a new narrow gauge railway has been built. The gauge of the line is 2 foot 6 inches, and 
locomotive power is provided by a 50 horsepower Hunslet mining locomotive, which once belonged to the Ministry of Defence. This little diesel makes up a train before carrying passengers along a short demonstration. Today, there's also a traction engine rally on the site. Many of the engines have spent all their working lives on the island. popular beauty spot which boasts a pleasure park, chairlift, multicolored cliffs and the famous needles. <laughs> <laughs>